F1 2020 got underway properly today when Haas revealed the first images of its new car. The VF20 is the team's fifth Formula 1 car that it hopes will perform better than the troublesome machine that it produced last year. Now one change that was immediately obvious is the livery. Is it new? Is it old? We'll get to that shortly. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to introduce Autosport's technical editor, Jake Boxall Leg. Now, you've already been taking a, an in-depth look at the images that were revealed today, so what did you make of Hass's new creation? Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm really happy that launch season's back with us. Um, there's always this mass uh, hysteria, sorry, hysteria at this time of year. And we've got a new car to finally talk about. So uh, I think the main thing to take away is Apart from its rather lovely livery, it's very similar to the Ferrari from last year, isn't it? And that's, I'm assuming, a good thing for Haas? Uh, well, it can't be any worse than last year. Um, let's be honest, the car was incredibly problematic last year and there was this huge problem with getting the tyres within a window that, you know, they could work and work for a sustained period of time. So in qualifying, they would be absolutely fine. Uh, in low conditions, low temperature conditions, they would be absolutely fine. But when it was, I don't know, a 25 to 30 degree race, give it five laps and they were falling through the field. So this is a, a bit of a new concept for them um, and hopefully it will, it will work a little bit better. Now, if you had to put a figure on how much of this new car or Hass's new car is the old Ferrari or looks like the old Ferrari, what, what would you think of that? Uh, well, let's go through each individual bit. So the front wing, for example, is incredibly Ferrari-esque. Now, they trialled something like this in Brazil practice last year and a number of other races as well to try and sort of determine where the problems lay in their car last year. It seemed to be with the front wing, so they've gone for this Ferrari design, tested it in practice, and they've kind of stuck with it. But Haas weren't alone in doing that, were they? A no. lot of other teams went down that route as well, at least looking at what Ferrari were doing, right? Yeah, so a couple of other, so for example, Williams brought something a little bit similar, which they actually raced uh, in Brazil. Red Bull brought something similar as well. So that kind of seems to be almost a theme. Um, I don't know if we'll see uh, over the coming days whether that is actually a recurring theme that we'll see. But Haas has certainly kicked that off. Um, there's a number of other Ferrari hallmarks as well, for example. So the engine cover that we can see there. If you look at it straight on, it's a sort of triangular shape that was very specific to the Ferrari last year. Uh, there's that little cut out in the engine cover now. That's sort of something that Haas had last year. But they've kept that, but they've managed to shrink it down a little bit as Ferrari did last year. Um, the M plate design as well in particular, very similar to Ferrari. So there's a theme here that and I'm going to pick out little bits and say this is very similar to the Ferrari. They've changed the nose design as well, so there's like that Singapore Ferrari style design. So again, there's a lot of hallmarks going on here, um, and it's sort of less Haas, and it's definitely more Ferrari this year, it seems. Just to pick up one very specific thing, why is the triangular airbox so unique to the Ferrari, or why, why are Ferrari doing that? Okay, so what a number of teams have started to do is try and take out some of the radiators from within the side pods and bring them above the air intake towards the engine and power unit components. And that seems to be to try and reduce the overall drag that the side pods produce, sort of shrink them in a little bit further, and you see a lot of teams doing that. And up here, it's sort of a little bit beefier in this area, if you like. But Ferrari has decided to sort of stick with more conventional if you keep the radiators in here, so you can kind of see the bulge here where the radiators are slanted downwards and so this triangular shape is possible uh, you usually have an inlet here and an inlet here and that kind of although it's keeping the sort of center of gravity down as well um, it's also sort of streamlining the airflow to the rear of the car but obviously the other design wouldn't be you know wouldn't be good if if everybody's using it so it's kind of like a split kind of design here and Obviously, this kind of design works for Ferrari, I guess. Now, from what we've seen so far, because we're assuming that Haas will be bringing some maybe extra parts or things that aren't visible on these pictures to testing and for the start of the season, do you think it's going to cure the problems that plagued the team last year? Uh, I mean, looking at a picture, it's, it's kind of hard to see. Um, it can't be any worse than last year, not only in terms of performance, but for long-term aspirations for the team as well. Because if they can pick it up, turn the car around, take the bad taste of 2019 out of their mouths and sort of create something that's a little bit more like the Haas we're used to seeing, then it should be absolutely fine. But if they can't turn it around, that's when Gene Haas says, OK, is this a viable long term option? Can I keep investing into a team that's not performing? And so I think a lot hinges on this year. So I think it has to be better uh, if, 
everyone in the team is going to keep their jobs. Has to be better. Very good there. Now, just to put you on the spot again, JBL, do you think we've seen any cues or clues to what we might see about the new Ferrari? Because obviously the rules are stable this year. There should be no changes. It's all going to be about evolution, not revolution. Any clues on what has to have released? Or is it just catching that team up to where the team that it's so closely linked to in Ferrari is, was last year? I think usually we've always looked at the Haas and gone, is this going to bear any hallmarks to Ferrari? But there are, were a few parts of last year's car where it was similar to the car before, rather than providing a clue into what the you know their protectorate team is going to produce. Um, perhaps, I think at the rear, is the most telling example. Uh, a couple of tests that Ferrari did last year was with the exhaust pipe or wastegate position. And they've gone for a wastegate above the exhaust and that's presumably what they're going to run throughout the season. So they've presumably scrapped the wastegate design that they tested in Abu Dhabi last year. But I think the rest of the bodywork, again, Haas is just sort of following in the footsteps of Ferrari. I don't think it will ever be on level hanging, but um, I think they're just trying to sort of keep up. It worked for Ferrari last year, so they'll do the same this year. Uh, obviously, for 2021, that's going to be very, very different indeed. But I think for this year, at least, it will provide some degree of improved performance. Hmm. Now, also joining us today is Autosport's new Formula One reporter, Luke Smith. Welcome, Thank Luke. You. How's it going? Nice to be here. All good. Good. Well, you've seen what we're doing with the launch season and analysing everything in depth as we can. And, uh, you know, things are coming thick and fast, mm. as we'll get into in the coming weeks. Uh, but, Luke. Haas coming into 2020, it had, a, it had a pretty turbulent year last year. We had the, the rich energy fiasco, I think that wouldn't be too strong a word to call it there, and all the things that came around that. Uh, lots of good headlines, it must be said. Uh, but also, the drivers hitting each other a lot, and there was obviously the problems with the correlation with the, with the flaws and the technical things not working as the team hoped. So, do you think that 2020 is all about having a smooth year for the team? First of all, on the, on the driving front, the sporting side, but also sort of the business side of things as well. Definitely, yeah. I mean, as JBL said, it's about... Gene Haas looking into the future, is this a viable project for the future, commercially can it work and basically why does he want to race in Formula 1 and I think last year the honeymoon period really ended for Haas, so they went from being punching above their weight, fighting at the front of the midfield to really really struggling. Um, that reality will bite for everyone at, at some point, it was always going to happen um, but yeah I think as you say that they've just got to get through this year as stable as possible. Um, Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen, it's been made very very clear to them that they cannot have a repeat the clashes from last year. Um, we talk about the sort of Ferrari crossover, I think some of the tensions at Ferrari, you can see a similar thing in Haas maybe even. Um, and both drivers know that they've got to really this year just tidy up their acts and make sure there's no repeat of that because it cost the team a lot of opportunities and when they had chances to score points that were few and far between, then incidents such as at Silverstone when they hit each other, that was a really big setback. So uh, yeah, I think they need to they need to sort that out. I think post Rich Energy, that saga being in the past now, that is a very good thing. I think it's very very stable for the team now. Um, and yeah, I think they just need to get through this year and uh, try and get back towards that sort of front of the midfield because uh, I think Gene Haas has made clear from day one he's not in F1 to be trundling around in 14th, 15th place. He wants to be uh, fighting as high up the grid as possible. Mm. How destabilising do you think it was that whole Rich energy saga? I think very much so. Um, we had a, a, the other night, a premiere of the Netflix new series coming out and uh, we're not allowed to talk much about it um, but uh, the rich energy saga is a big part of that and you see more than I think came out at the time about how much of an impact it had on the Haas team um, and because uh, it didn't look good and there were a lot of sort of things said obviously on social media as we know about uh, about what happened and I think it just didn't give the team a very good image and for such a good news story I think that Haas had been in F1 up to last year coming in an American team that's what good for Liberty as well um, and being successful from day one to then have I think 2019 leave a really, really sour taste. I think that was a big setback, definitely. Mm. And also, you know, the, as we go back to Magnussen and Grosjean and the constant contact they <laughs> seem to be having, particularly through the middle of last year, was that much of a surprise to see that happen? Or was it just a natural consequence of the situation the team found itself in? Um, I think... I think it was surprising that it happened so regularly and that it was a, a sort of really running story through the season. I think that, um, that Haas didn't jump on it quickly enough and obviously you always want to manage your drivers well you don't want to sort of say one strike and you're out you want to give them a chance but uh, it did keep happening and I think that you've got two drivers there who are very um, they're very passionate they're very determined and I think they if they were with any other teammate they would sort of be seen as the more fiery member of that team but when you put the two of them together it's uh, stuff like that is going to happen I think um, 
Uh, but they're both quick drivers. I think Magnussen has proven that in particular over the last few years. Um, I think Grosjean will know he does need to up his game coming into this season. Um, but the, the team said that they couldn't pin the blame on its poor season on the drivers. The car was fundamentally flawed. They know that. Um, and I think the hope is that the stability in the regulations into this year means that the mistakes of last year will be avoided. Mm. Now, the year before, going back to 2018, the team finished fifth in the Constructors' Championship, its best result so far, and the real high watermark for the new squad. Do you think it can get back there or has too much happened, first of all, at the team itself, but also other squads making steps forward? I think probably the, the, the second half of that is more the concern that everyone else has made this big progress forward. And uh, we saw, uh, I think, McLaren last year, I think that proves that you can have a really difficult year and turn everything around and really make that big step up the grid. Um, but I think Haas is, is in a very different position. I mean, doesn't have all the experience and all the history that McLaren does and I think can can tap into more. Um, so I think, yeah, it's going to be a big ask for them. But we've seen that midfield has been so, so, so tight. Um, and uh, we saw that on occasion last year, Haas was the midfield team to beat. In Australia, it was in the front of the midfield. Um, Austria, Kevin Magnussen's qualifying lap, that was proof of that it could produce on occasion. So uh, yeah, I think they just need a bit of stability and to try and get back into the, the groove that saw them so well through 2018. Now, what do we think of the livery? It's, uh, it's gone back to Hass's corporate colours. It's got a lot of silver, red and black, obviously. Now, I think that's a bit conservative with a small C. Uh, but actually, considering when Gene Hass is in Formula 1 to, sh to sell his products, that's what he's doing. He's advertising his company. You can understand it. So as much as perhaps we'd love to see something a bit more wacky and, and out there, you can kind of understand that. So, yeah, guys, what's your verdict on the 2020 livery for Hass? I think it's pretty cool. Um, it reminds me of a... a Porsche uh, racing car being in Formula E or WEC or something like that. Um, that's, I think, that's every car in Formula E. Well, yeah, basically. Silver, red, black, black, red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all good. <laughs> um, I think particularly the, the front-on shot of the car as well, it really, really has some sort of like Porsche colours and vibes coming through. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's pretty cool, actually. I like it. The reason why they do that, by the way, is because it looks good on TV. It stands out on TV. But then if every car is the same colour scheme, does it stand out? True. <laughs> a philosophical question there. But anyway, sorry, JVR, you were saying? Um, it's, it's good to see those colours back again, isn't it? I think the black and gold sort of signified something, a sort of bit of turmoil, a turbulent time for the team. And this is kind of the statement of we want to go back to where we were. Um, and they seem to be doing it every other year as well. So 2016, 2018, now 2020, they've had that scheme. 2017, 2019, slightly different schemes and not quite as much luck either. So hopefully it'll work out better.